If you guys are looking to buy some cheap and reliable MT, head on over to AOLA.com and use code YBC at checkout for a discount. Yo, what's good YouTube? It's YBC and I am back. Bring another video. And in this video, I'm going to be going over the brand new player of the month for May in NBA 2K20, my team. Before we hop into it, everything, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. Right now, we are on this road and grinding 90,000 subscribers. So, I'm achieve that 90k goal today if you guys are new. And also, if you guys could do me a real quick favor and drop a like on this video, that would be greatly appreciated. Let's see if we can hit 500 likes on this video. So, as you guys do probably know, tonight at midnight, 2k resets the player of the month reward. In which, guys, for this upcoming month of May, it is going to be Galaxy Opal Glenn Rice. The database sites, guys, 2 Candy Central and my team database site always releases the cards earlier than usual. In which right here, guys, you can see the brand new card of this Glenn Rice card. It is a cool card, don't get me wrong, based off the card arts, we'll, we will go over the badge and attributes. But honestly, I expected a little bit more of a name branded card. And I also expected a point guard, although the shooting guard, guys, is a W. Man, the shooting guard, which I did expect as well. In my predictions video on Sunday, I did predict, guys, that we are going to be getting a guard. In which, guys, we do have ourselves a guard right here, being this Galaxy Opal Glenn Rice. He could play the shooting guard and the small four position. So I was relatively right in the category of where, what position he was going to play. But it came to the card, guys. I wasn't really close to it. I said Walt Frazier, and this guy right here is Glenn Rice. But the position, I was still on point when it came to the position. Based off of that note, guys, we're now going to be taking a look right here at Glenn Rice's attributes and badges. And then I'm going to give you guys some quick tips to help you guys go 12-0 and, and get this card right here for May. I have made tons of how to go 12-0 and videos, and I will leave some of them down below in the description. So I'm not going to make this video too crazy long and go too in-depth. I'm just going to be giving you guys some offensive and defense settings that I feel like are the best to help you guys out. But when it comes to in-depth details on going 12-0, and guys, I have plenty of those videos already up. On the channel now when it comes to this opal glenn rice card right here guys taking a look at his hot spots he has hot spots from literally everywhere on the court which is a massive w and take a look right here guys at his shooting he, his outside shooting guys 98 mid-range 98 three-pointer 95 free throw that shooting right there guys is great when it comes to the inside score it looks pretty solid as well 95 driving layup 90 driving dunk 95 draw foul 94 post fadeaway that is a w as well guys you guys already know how cheesy that post fadeaway is in my team it also does have an 84 post hook the playmaking is solid for this card right here at an 88 ball handle and a 90 pass accuracy his athleticism is great guys 95 speed 92 speed with ball 95 vertical 90 strength that is that strength is actually really good for the shooting guard position he can hold he's gonna be able to hold a lot of shooting guards he also does come with a 98 stamina his defense is pretty good as well guys actually really really good 95 lateral quickness 85 block 94 perimeter defense 88 interior defense and 91 steal and wrap it all up he does come with a 78 offense rebound and a 79 defensive rebound now i did forget to mention before i went over his attributes that this card right here guys is standing in at six foot seven which is a great height as well guys for the shooting guard position as we're now going moving on right here guys to the badges for this card he does come with a grand total of 68 badges 43 hall of fame and 25 on gold it always takes me a quick second to do my math when it comes to the hall of fame badge right here guys for the finishing he does come with eight hall of fame badges and nine gold badges guys when it comes to the shooting he does come with pretty much every single shooting badge on hall of fame 17 hall of fame shooting badges guys except for that steady shooter badge in which he does not have when it comes to the playmaking guys he does come with seven hall of fame badges and nine gold badges playmaking badge for this guy on hall of fame are ankle breaker downhill handles for days quick first step tight handles and unpluckable that those badges right there guys are really really good for the playmaking ones you need Unpluckable, you need tie handles and you need handles for days. This man right here has it all on Hall of Fame, which is a W. Because of the defense, guys, this man right here has 17 total defensive badges, 10 of them being on Hall of Fame and, and 7 of them being on gold. The Hall of Fame ones, guys, are Hall of Fame pickpocket, pick dodger, clamps, heart crusher, intimidator, moving truck, off ball pest, pogo stick, house defender, and trapper. This card right here, guys, actually like looks like a really, really good card, but he is not really that name branded card like Will Chamberlain and you know, someone like James Warriors. But nonetheless, guys, all around this card right here is really, really good. All in all, guys, this Glenn Rice card right here, guys, does look like a very, very solid card all around. And he most definitely looks worth the grind. Now, there are rumors, guys, that this card right here is going to have the base 98 Dwayne Wade's jump shot. Although, I don't know 100%, so don't quote me on that. There are rumors of it. And supposedly, this card right here does have it in, like, play now or something like that. But Golf Pedri had that base 98 in my team and 2K removed it. So when it comes to this card right here, ultimately, I don't know a jump shot at all. But based on rumors, guys, he's likely going to have base 98, which is the exact same as Wade. But like I said, guys, I just simply don't know. 
Moving along right here, guys. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be giving you guys some quick tips and tricks for the offensive and defensive settings. I'll be guys go 12 and 0 for me. Starting off right here, guys, with these offensive settings. The only thing I really change when it comes to the offensive settings is my freelance of my settings. And the freelancers, the best freelancers to use, guys, are Piston Snap, Hawks 2018, and also Point. Those three are the best freelancers to use. I myself go with Point, so that one I feel like is the best. The Point, Hawks 2018 or piss and snap, those are the best three to use. Now when it comes to defensive settings right here guys, this is what you're more so gonna wanna pay attention to because these are defensive settings right here guys, I feel like are the best in the game and I always use these whenever I go 12 and 0 in unlimited. When it comes to the on ball pressure right here guys, I do have this one right here on smothered and the reason why I do have it on smothered right here guys is because when you on ball pressure someone on smothered, they pick up the opposing offensive player at the hash slash half court area, which means guys, he's going to be pressured when it, as soon as he crosses the half court line. When it comes to the on ball pressure on tight guys, he does not get pressured at all until he comes to the three point line. In which, guys, sometimes when it comes to three-point lines, the man can hesitate up and do like a quick stop and shoot it in your face from Limitless. In which, guys, you're going to be getting scored on a lot when it comes to tight. Make sure you guys do have that on smother, guys, because that is the most important thing. Make sure that when, when your opponent crosses half court, you're going to be smothering him when it comes to the on-ball pressure. Now, to be completely honest with you guys, this on-ball pressure usually has a bigger effect on off-ball defense. For those of you guys who play off-ball defense, this is, the most, this is a very important setting for you. For those, for those of you guys who play on-ball defense... This setting right here isn't really that important at all. When it comes to the other settings for off-ball pressure, like when it comes to deny ball, that is not what you want, guys, because if you deny ball on somebody and, and they have, like, an isolation kind of on the left wing or right wing area, as you can see right here, usually the, usually what I do whenever I see somebody deny ball, I send them on a cut immediately because every single time, and I mean every single time, somebody who denies ball gets beat on a front cut or a backdoor cut, and it is literally every single time. It's a two-pointer every single time for me. So whenever I see that, guys, I'm happy that my opponent does that. So with that being said, guys, I don't want you guys doing that deny ball uh, on off-ball pressure because it is super easy to get scored on. When it comes to the off-ball pressure right here on moderate, whenever I see somebody, guys, that is that has a thing on moderate, I always do, just do a quick pass to that side and catch and shoot with my Hall of Fame quick draw card because with moderate off-ball pressure, it is super hard to get a contest. So say, for example, now you guys do play up against me and you guys do use the off-ball pressure on tight. That is the middle, guys, of moderate and the middle of the night ball. I'm not going to be getting a lot of catch and shoot three-pointers because you'll be in my face and you'll be able to contest it with tight. I'm not going to be getting a lot of backdoor cuts because tight guys stop the backdoor cuts as well. It's in the middle of both. Moving along right here, guys, to the fourth direction. Leave this one right here on automatic. Some people force people middle. Some people force people baseline. I like to leave this right here on automatic. And I, I like to just simply play straight up because there are a lot of exploits when it comes to forcing middle and forcing baseline that people do abuse. So I leave this right here on automatic. When it comes to the on-ball screen, go over for both on-ball screen on center and on-ball screen on regular. I like going over on these right here, guys, and that complements it right here with the hedge. I like to have these right here on catch hedge. And I like to have these four settings right here, guys, because say, for example, you're playing pick and roll defense, or I'm playing pick and roll defense, and my my opposing player I'm playing up against comes off the screen with their guard, and they look for three-point. They want to get really, really three-point hungry. Well, now I have my, my guy coming off the pick going over the screen, so I'll be able to get a little bit of a contest on my opponent's three-point with the guy coming off the screen. Now, say, for example, my opponent now drives as my as my guard or my player gets caught on the screen he drives to the bucket well now guys I have this catch hedge right here in which guys the player usually my center who's guarding the pick and roll will drop down a little bit and guard the paint and stick his hand straight up this right here guys is the best for pick and roll settings possible when it comes to the screen when it comes to stay attached right here guys I like to leave this one right here on automatic this setting right here does not really have a big impact on the game same thing guys with the post leave the post on automatic as well when it comes to the off ball screen right here go over guys same exact thing with the on ball screen go over because a lot of people like to cheese and get three point and get three point hungry with the off ball screen so just simply go over double team perimeter double team post leave these both on manual I don't like having my computers double team at all it gets very annoying when they do. And here you got, in case you guys are wondering what the double team button is, it is L1 on PS4 and I believe LB on Xbox. Do move along right here, guys, to the switch rules off ball. Leave this on automatic. Pre rotate, I like to have this on no. Lastly, when it comes to the screen and drive help rules, this right here, guys, probably the most important defensive setting of the entire video. Leave these right here, guys, on no help for both. You guys already know how insane, how, how like annoying and how insane the computer is when it comes to the help. Simply leave this on no help, guys, and your computers won't help at all. There are so many times, guys, when I play great defense for like 20 seconds, and the last four seconds, guys, my computer just simply help out from the corner. As I can see right here, look at the screen help rules. The computer, the computer just simply help out of the corner for no reason at all if I get beat or something, or even if I'm on his, on his hip a little bit, still, still playing good defense. 
this is right here is not what you want. You want it like this, guys. You want them to stay home and stay still. Now, in case you guys didn't miss out on any settings that I did go over right here in this video, here is the settings, again, that I did use. On ball pressure smother, off ball pressure tight, fourth direction auto, on ball screen go over, hedge, catch hedge, stay attached auto, post auto, off ball screen go over, double teams both on manual, switch rules auto, crew rotate no, and both drive and screen help rules on no help. So that right there, guys, now pretty much can do it for this video. As I mentioned earlier, guys, I do have a ton of these videos already up on my channel where I did go into deeper detail about which lineup is the best, you know, what to do before you hop into a game, the playbooks, the coaches. Those videos right there, those videos that I did post will be down below in the description. They're pretty much the exact same, guys. If, if I were to make another 12 and 0 video, guys, they're pretty much the exact same type of tips that I would produce in that video. So I'm not really going to repost that, guys. I'll just simply leave that in the comment section or in, in the description for you guys to take a look at. With that being said, if you guys have any questions upon going 12-0, if you guys need any lineup suggestions, feel free to let me know down below in the comment section. You guys know me. I always love reading and responding to your comments. Now, briefly, getting back on the, onto that Glenn Rice card, honestly, this month right here, guys, is not going to be that sweaty of a month, I feel like. Because Will Chamberlain and James Worthy were more so name-branded cards, and I mentioned earlier, because Glenn Rice isn't the biggest name-branded card, he's not going to be a super, and I mean super sweaty card, that everybody likes to sweat for. So, for those of you guys who do go 12-0, usually, this month will be a little bit easier in the last two months, in which were probably the hardest two months of the entire year going for Will and James Worthy. So right there, guys, I'm pretty much going to do it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. And if you guys did, make sure you guys want it. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, drop a like. would be greatly appreciated. And as usual, as always, thanks for watching. And it's YBC, and I'm out. Peace.